<laughs> Here we are, May 31st, 2020, at the uh, junction of Highway 97 and Barkerville Highway. We're having a rally here to save the Grinnell Gold Pan City sign from being removed by the Mayor and City Council. Nice turnout for the day. Hello. Oh. Hello. <laughs> we were concerned that we didn't have enough people, but we got a whole bunch more over in the parking lot ready to go. I want to welcome you to the Quinell Gold Pandemic Rally. We are opposed to moving this gold pan, are we not? Let me hear you. <laughs> I'm not going to go into too much of the politics today and why we're doing what we're doing. You've heard it, you've read it online, I'm sure. Um, we will give a brief rundown of the plan. I need three vol uh, actually a volunteer to, for the goal pet to, uh, for signs. Who's going to... Can I have a volunteer for the signs, Diane? Would you do that for me? <laughs> for what, yep. For signs, for homemade signs. We've got prizes. Oh. I'm going to turn this up for you for a little bit. Oh, okay. Try that. Hello? Is that better? Try that. One, two, three, four, five. One, one, two, three, four, five. I'll just turn my hearing aid down. Okay, what we want to do is we want to encourage you to come up and share how you're feeling about the gold pan. Is there anybody here that wants to come forward and say a few words? Don't be shy, we're among friends here. Nobody? John? <laughs> okay. I, I will. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> hey there, folks. Um, the thing is, is with this, I think, like I drive by this all the time. I live out Cottonwood uh, on the Barkerville Highway. I think this pan, does an awful lot of business with, with tourists that, that go and help our local people that, that run businesses out in Cottonwood and out in uh, uh, Wells and, and Barkerville. I see no reason. Uh, it looks beautiful here. Like there's so many people I've seen that stop by here, tourists that will stand up there proud as punch and, and get their picture taken with this. Uh, I don't believe that that kind of stuff will happen or it'll affect uh, Wells and Barkerville and Cottonwood uh, if it's moved to the other side of town. Like I think all that will help maybe is uh, with that Rocky Mountaineer that none of us here can afford to ride on. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Well said, Sharon. Anybody else? This has been a sign for all of us for so many years, you know. We have people that have moved away from Quinnell and, and they come back and they remember, this is the way to Barkerville, this is the way to Quinnell. You know, it, it just stands out. This is us. This is all about us, you know. And it just seems like our voices are not heard, you know, like, like it's like a dictatorship we're living in. Uh -huh. Yes. You know, he gets what he wants all the time. You know, and our voices are just go under the wayside. You know, doesn't matter to him as long as he gets his way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too many disagree with that. <laughs> Anybody else? Justice would like to say a few words. Um, I'm one of the uh, younger of the generation, um, and I used to live out towards Cottonwood House, and I would drive by this all the time. And I think it's beautiful where it is. And I mean, 
sure there's not a very nice trail to it or there's not a lot of seating but they could put a little bit of money towards that and make this a really nice location for it and i think instead of wasting a bunch of money trying to move it that they should leave it here and more and invest more money into the roads around Cornell. yeah here you right on thank you justice Young blood. Yeah. anybody else <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Juliana Lucas and I made this sign. <laughs> Where I go, Juliana? Okay, but I made another one. I'll show you after a while. I've been living here for 35 years and I have, somebody told me that she's 34 years old here. Now, why do we have to move this iconic gold pan city where it's so beautiful, 80% plus of the population of Quinell don't want to move this iconic symbol? Why? Why do we have to spend money when we can spend money to other projects? It's supposed to be first things first, right? Right. I have some friends who came from Ireland, from Edmonton. We came here, took some pictures. And why are we moving it? I want to know the reason why. And I made another one. <laughs> Be a good boss, please. Be a good leader. If I'm only one of the council people, I'll be the black sheep. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. <laughs> Ron Paul, are you going to come up and say a few words? Could we try and convince you? <laughs> Don't get political. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Well, that's a, a pretty tough act to follow. Thank you for that. Uh, did you say something about that gold pan up there made by your granddaughter? No. I want you to say something about that. My granddaughter made the gold pan up here that's sitting on the shovel. And I'm really proud of her for that. She, she did it willingly without much cajoling either. Hang on. I got to have a little drink of juice here. <laughs> oh, sluice juice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Debbie. Uh, first off, um, I am here as one of you, not speaking as a member of City Council or for the city. But for those of you that don't know, I recently received a letter... I recently received a letter from the mayor advising that uh, my committee appointments have been extinguished and that I am not to speak on behalf of the city and that if I, if, if I am speaking about anything to do with the city, I have to preface my remarks with, in my opinion. So, in my opinion, <laughs> this old gold pan and I go back a long, long way. Way back to 1983, when I was appointed to the Expo 86 Tourism Advisory Board for the World's Fair in Vancouver. So I, over the years, I was on that committee for four years, I developed a, a pretty uh, good relationship with the Minister of Tourism and I talked her into a $25,000 grant for this gold pan. The gold pan was built by Lyndon Weldon just across the street, and it's been here at home for the last 33 years, since 1987. Okay, fast forward to today and the city's wayfinding signage plan, which I opposed for two reasons. One. The exorbitant, in my opinion, one million dollar cost, and the fact that it was discreetly buried within the wayfinding plan, a brief mention of the new It's In Our Nature gateway sign on this very site. 
even though it didn't say our gold pan would have to move, I could see the handwriting on the wall. Our gold pan would be gone. Council was presented with three options. One, Labordi Park. Two, Chuck Beef Park. And three, the train station. By the way, one of the most unsightliest train stations around. Now remember, I had, always, I had already voted against moving our gold pan from its home right here. I did manage to get a motion on the floor to locate it to Laborde Park. But as you can well expect, that was defeated. Right after reluctantly yielding to the train station over Chuck Beef Park, I made it known that for me, the train station would not work for several reasons. Number one, safety. Yeah. And number uh, A under safety is visitors unfamiliar with the area and locals and their families and little kids crossing Highway 97 to see the gold pan. And B, no barrier to separate the gold pan from an active railway yard. Yeah. Number two, photographic background. I don't think I need to go any further than to, to remind everybody that the background is a bunch of graffiti covered box cars. Number three, lighting. If you go down there and look at the position of the proposed gold pan in relation to, to the sun, the sun would never shine on that pan, on the front of it at least. Number four, it is off of Highway 97. Now we've got to think about after the north-south interconnector goes in, and I, and I am convinced that eventually it will. So therefore, it is primarily for the benefit of the never-to-return Rocky Mountain Ear pastors, passengers. And number five, those passengers... Sorry. Number five... Uh, those passengers on Rocky Mountaineer uh, would only see the backside of the pan before hurriedly boarding their motor coaches for dinner at their hotel. They're not going to come in, around to the front of the pan. And those of you from the Prospectors Car Club know full well that when the train came in, they would never come over and look at the old cars. So if they're not going to go and look at old cars, whatever, give them the idea that they're going to come and look at a gold pan. Right on. Right on, Ron. And number six... Uh, because the pan will be crammed up against the station house, it will be hidden from view from approaching northbound Highway 97 traffic. But my efforts to express my concerns and ideas were not to be heard. I was bluntly told the matter was closed. Ah. Period. Wow. I even suggested the pan be given to Barkerville and moved a couple of hundred feet north to where that plywood sign is to replace the Barkerville sign. There was, even a, there was even a sponsor that might have paid to move the, Barker, move the sign and do the Barkerville refresh. How about placing the new It's In Our Nature sign on city airport land right across the street with a nice pullout where businesses, where businesses could put up their signs? But no, that, that, would, that was a no-go. Um, a petition with over 600 names did no good. Nor did an observer survey with 1,800 responses. 86% of those 1,800 people said no to the move. The public outcry on social media is overwhelming. Even ex-mayor Mike Pierce, who was mayor back in 87 when this pan came in, and i got to tell you that I was in deep caca with him, so it's nothing new for, to be, for, for me to be in trouble with the mayor because my, my full page front pic, picture was on the full page of the uh, June 24, 1987 issue of the Caribou Observer. And the, the mayor reminded me that that was no place for my picture, that he should have been there. Um, so nothing, nothing really much has changed in, uh, in 33 years. And here's something to think about. Council can change their mind. Section 26, subsection 2 of Procedure Bylaw number 1784 says they can. Council will not be moved, but our gold pan will be moved.
But if all we get is lemons, let's make lemonade. What a great opportunity to finally get this gold pan into the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest gold pan. In fact, one thing that won't be immediately removed won't be immediately removed from this site is a reference on Google Maps. Go on, and I pulled this right off the city website. It takes you into Google Maps. And guess what's right here on Google Maps? The world's largest gold pen. So I thought that that was kind of cool. But going back to 1987, when we had Linden Welding and Fabricating build this uh, gold pen, and we put it up, and after I had my picture on the front cover of the Observer and after the mayor had taken me into his office and given me a dressing down, I thought, oh, let's get this thing to the, into Guinness Book. So I took a picture of the gold pen and sent it off to Guinness. And they said, yes, uh, we could do that, uh, but please send us evidence of the fact that you, in fact, pan gold out of it. <laughs> and I said, oh, I said, we didn't pan any gold out of it, but we could if we want. Well, you do that, because right now it's not a gold pan, it's a sign. So that was that. So I did suggest to the mayor that since we're going to move the gold pan, uh, let's get a big crane and suspend it on an angle and put one of those shaker devices on the back of the gold pan that they use commercial or industrially for, um, for sluice boxes and put in some generously salted gravel and some water and let's shake some gold out of that thing and then we'll send it into Guinness and I, I think that we would finally be in the book. <laughs> but when I advanced that idea to the mayor, you can imagine the response that I got. <laughs> um, the matter is closed. But you know what? At the end of the day, there is one thing that I cannot be denied. And that is knowing that I am with the people on this one as I am on many other things, that's why I got the letter from the mayor for having an opinion, and that you, the people, are with me on this one too. Yeah. Right on. So, in closing, thank you everyone for coming out. Debbie's going to give you some um, details about uh, where we're going to parade to. I'd like to thank Debbie and John Matthews over here for. Um, my old Billy Barker days um, friends, and I noticed that there's some other people here from Billy Barker days. Good on you guys for showing up and um, putting today's rally together. Thank you, Deb. Big hand for Ron. Thank you, Ron. Our champion who always, always is in trouble with the mayor. <laughs> I'm going to get uh, John Matthews to come forward, and he's going